Nobody's come out of there in weeks. Where's my wife? Where's my son? Are you guys the Desert Rangers? Abby said you were coming. That's enough. You can talk to your friends later. We were here first. What's going on inside the factory? We heard shooting in there. We demand to know our loved ones are safe. Sorry, friends. Sorry. Trust me, when this push is over, your relatives will be coming out of this gate with smiles on their faces and big fat paychecks in there. Oh, sorry. Something's come up. Gotta go. Don't forget to talk to Dr. Breeler about your screening, Rangers. Can't wait to see you. That doesn't look like it came out of Steel Town. Welcome to the Steel Town Human Resources Evaluation Center. Enter the body scanner behind me to begin your assessment for employment and... Uh... You don't look like the usual candidates. What's going on? Why do you have so many weapons? I'm not the doorman, I'm afraid. Not anymore. Sorry. To enter the factory, you have to pass the evaluation test. And to do that, you have to be examined by the machines. And lately, they've been failing applicants 9.9 .9 times out of 10. The door hasn't opened in a week. Good luck. I don't make the rules, sorry. I don't even enforce them. I just watch helplessly from the sidelines. Ha! I put in a requisition for more toilet paper two weeks ago, and I haven't heard from them since. It's like I don't exist. <sighs> sure, ask away. I've got nothing else to do. And I'm not even being sarcastic. To be the living definition of the term Kafkaesque? To drain the hopes and dreams of a hundred plus people a day? To drive me to drink? <sighs> Sorry, I have a bile problem. The stated purpose of the test is to evaluate the fitness, work experience, and mental stability of people seeking employment in the factory. People who pass are sent for job placement inside, but, but that almost never happens. Inertia? Once upon a time, I had a staff here, and we gave all these tests manually. Sent a lot of people through that door to a good job and a better life. Then Markham built her computation engine and decided that it would make all the hiring decisions. So she had these evaluation machines installed and told me that my new job was to be the friendly face that prepped people for the test. Apparently, the computation engine said that was the position I'm best suited for. So now the machines do all the work, and I drink. Ha! <laughs> 
What I tell myself every morning when I get up is, it's better to be paid for getting drunk than to not be paid for getting drunk. I've never seen it. Could be a big brain in a box for all I know. But if that's the case, then it's got brain damage. Because the people who go through that door are always the ones I wouldn't have picked in a million years. It's like a magic asshole picking machine. Oops. Sorry. I'm supposed to say it's the best thing ever. So, it's the best thing ever. Horace Breeder. You wouldn't guess it now, but I was an actual doctor once. Now, I don't even do the eye test. Only good thing is, I can do this job stone drunk. So I am stone drunk as often as I can be. Like now, for instance. Good to know, Doc. Good to know. Sure. I don't have the facilities, or the faculties for that matter, to do anything major. But if you want me to patch you up, why not? Not doing much else. It'll cost you, though. Here goes nothing. Don't mind the shaky hands. Then step into the garbage disposal behind me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm at the biometric assessment pod. Don't get your hopes up, though. You look too competent to pass. Please keep your arms and legs fully inside the chamber. Assessment pod has completed its evaluation. Please move on to the ocular scanner.
Okay, that's over with. Let me take a look at the results. Ooh, you passed. I can't believe it. You're the first in days. We finally got a pass. Open the main gate. Go back outside to the main gate and they'll let you in. I tell Benny Beyonce I'm still waiting for my toilet paper. First warning, unauthorized requisition of supplies. Years of medical supplies must be approved by Dr. Wheeler. Hey, I don't have much of that. You passed the screening? Welcome to Speed Town.
You didn't have much choice fighting the ghost gang rangers. And it's a shame. They ain't so bad. At least not to us in the camp. I'm Luis, by the way. Did I hear Benny Bianchi ask you to come see her in Steel Town earlier? Because if you're gonna pay her a visit, us folks here in the camp sure would like to know what's going on in there. Most of us have family working there. And, and what with it being locked down and all, we don't know if they're alive or dead or if we'll ever see them again. And Benny won't tell us a goddamn thing. My, my wife's in there, Florinda. Bandits. I hear a lot of them used to work for the factory. Now they try to raid it. They don't bother us much. I guess because we ain't got much to steal. Got a hideout somewhere in the scrapyard. Nobody knows where exactly. That's why folks call them the ghost gang. Damn near everything. Abigail Markham, who runs the place, got money from the Patriarch a while back to make it the center of industry in Colorado. Boy, did she deliver. Refit all of the ruined factories here in Pueblo. Got all the old systems up and running. Added a few of her own. Now the place makes generators. Engines, trucks, furnaces, radios, medical supplies, weapons, armor, everything. There are folks that say the founding of Steeltown was as much the making of Colorado as the Patriarch's government. Without the stuff they make here, he wouldn't have been able to do half as much. Well, he's right there. Steel Town has made Colorado a force to be reckoned with on the plains. Which is why it's weird to see it having conniptions like this. It used to be a well-oiled machine. Markham's happy talk mouthpiece. Always telling us Steel Town needs us. Sure it does. But not enough to give us four walls and a roof. We're dying by inches out here. If you ask Bianchi, we're the future employees of Steel Town. At least that's how she and Abigail Markham like to string us along. Who we really are is a bunch of displaced fools who thought this place was going to be our salvation. Thought it would feed us, house us, give us jobs. A 
some of us got jobs. Then they stopped hiring. And the rest of us have been freezing our asses off out here ever since. Out east, on the Colorado border, the Patriarch's peace with the gangs of the plains was supposed to make it safe territory. So we all went homestead. Now, though, seems like the gangs have forgotten the peace exists. They've been coming for settlers like wolves come for sheep. No choice but to up stakes and run. And this is where we ran to. Of course, now we're hearing that the gangs are coming here, so we may have only delayed our demise. That's what they say. Apparently, Liberty's sending a big scavenging crew this way, hoping to score some heavy artillery ahead of her attack on Colorado Springs. And if things go like they have been, Steel Town's guard bots will just hide behind the gates and let us get shot to pieces. Or worse, scooped up for slaves. I can't believe the owners of this place would leave these people to their fate. We must let them know what's happening here. Used to. It seems like they got their own problems now. Pulled back all their patrols. Guard bots only worry about keeping people from going in or out. No matter what Benny Bianchi says. Where else are we gonna go? Rumor is they're turning folks away at Colorado Springs. Besides, there's work here. At least they're supposed to be, if they ever start hiring again. Not to mention, a lot of us have family inside the factory. We're not going anywhere until we see them again. Oh man, could you? Her name is Florinda. She works in the Warbot factory. Just, just let her know that I'm still alive and I miss her. Thank you so much. Mighty nice of you to ask. Huh. Not that you mention it. There's one particularly crappy situation we could use some help with. See, we don't have a proper toilet here. It's dangerous. Not to mention colder than a robot's nuts go outside the camp. There's animals out there. So we've been going too close to home and it's kind of stinking up the place. Now, we spotted an old job Johnny at the scrapyard. There's a lot of nasty beasties around him. Nothing badasses like you couldn't handle, though. If you chase them off, my people can take care of dragging it back here. Thanks. We can hardly wait. Seriously. Wonderful. That's just what we've been praying for. So long now.
Thanks, Sierra. is open. You better go in. Can you pay me? <sighs> okay. Let me just put down my drink.
get worse! Better go in. Can you pay me? <sighs> okay, let me just put down my drink.
Any word on what's going on inside the factory? Shit, okay. Shit, yeah! I'll get someone on that right away! There it is! Set it down gentle. Just one more push, how to do it. Ah, nice. This is great, Rangers. Thank you so much. We really... Oh! <coughs> Smells worse than the back end of a bison. Rangers, if you wouldn't mind, we're gonna need something to clean this up. Steel Town makes a spray called Chemical Neutralizer. That ought to do the trick. If you see some, could you bring it to us? Thank you, Rangers. <laughs> Don't think any of us are gonna have the courage to use this can until it's been sanitized. Ah, good luck. How you doing? Oh, you're those Desert Rangers, huh? I'm Carla Asphalt Runner of Iron Thunder Logistics. Just trying to get some paperwork cleared up before I get the shipment on the road. Say, you wouldn't be going into the factory, would you? Because I've been trying to get this sorted out with Benny, my contact in there, and she's not picking up. Are you kidding? You can't get in there without taking some kind of stupid employment test. Even if you just want to ask a question. And nobody passed that test. You guys, though, the way you're tooled up, they might give you a pass. Well, I got a crate on my truck that's not on the manifest. And Iron Thunder prides itself on getting every delivery right. So I'm not driving off with something I don't have any paperwork for. Especially when it's a goddamn disassembled war bot. It's crazy, right? Steel Town makes war bots exclusively for the Patriarch. Nobody else can buy one. So finding one in a shipment with no shipping address or order number is <laughs> bad. Bad is right. The last thing the Marshals want, or the Rangers, is for some no good nicks to wind up with a war bot. And it gets weirder. When I opened the crate to see what was in it, this paper fell out. It says, remember, Jay, 60-40 means 60 for me, 40 for you. XOXOB. I don't know about you, but to me, it sounds like someone inside is stealing war bots. Thanks, I appreciate it. And here, take the note for evidence. Oh, also, if you need any supplies, I've got some returns ITL dispatch that I could sell. Let me know if you want to look. Have a look.
Lady Bianchi! Welcome to Steel Town. Good to finally meet you in the flesh. Abby and I thank you again so much for dealing with those pesky bandits. Ugh. You've made Steel Town better for everyone. Oh, I love Carla, but I'm afraid that'll have to wait until you've talked to Abby. If you can just give me your names for your badges, I'll send you right to her. That is so considerate. Thank you. You guys are so nice. Okay, got it. Here are your badges. Now, just follow the blue line and you'll find Abby in the control room. Or, I mean the dark blue line, not the light blue line. Actually, you could go straight. It's shorter that way. No, wait. You should probably take the blue line after all. The computation engine said that's where the line should be painted, and it's never wrong. Oh, also, if you're looking for an exciting career in the wonderful world of heavy industry, come back here after you've talked to Abby and I'll give you a placement test. Isn't she nice? I think that went well. Big place, huh? Sirens and shooting. There is trouble here for sure. Oh man, I'm gonna get fired. I just know it. Do you think the workers will come up here? I hope not. They smell like they haven't bathed in weeks. They have. Administrator. Ludlow if makes them pay. Ugh. We need to save their money the then. I'm by so oh, many. How long, guy? You said they'd never be breached, and it was less than a year before. God damn it! What is Ludlow doing down there? I can't hear myself think. Should we save the administrator? You have visitors. Huh? Who are you? I told Benny not to. Oh, you're the Desert Rangers, the one Saul sent to check up on me. Well, I can't say I'm happy to be spied on, but as long as you're here, you can make yourselves useful. I've got a situation on my hands. And you passed? Interesting. Well, welcome to Steel Town. I hope you're ready to earn what Saul is paying you. Now, listen. First off, we've heard that some of Liberty Buchanan's army are coming this way looking for easy pickings. Normally, we could manufacture some turrets and defend ourselves, but with this strike on... See, this whole place is run by a complex computation engine we built a while back. It does everything. Hiring, scheduling, production quotas, payroll, and until a few weeks ago, it worked like a charm. Then it started to get... buggy. Shifts and quotas were changed in strange ways. New hires were put in positions they were obviously unsuited for. At first, I went with it. The engine had never been wrong before, but it kept getting worse. There have been incidents, accidents. Those accidents have sparked worker unrest. And unfortunately, Ludlow, my new chief of security, seems to be one of those bad hires. He's chasing Celine Crow, the worker's leader, around like a rabid dog, causing as much damage as she is. You will not be a rabid dog. Get down to the factory and see what's what. If Ludlow's behaving, help him. If not, take over. Just remember, your priority is not punishing workers. It's getting things running again so we can protect ourselves. Not her whole army, just one of her foraging parties. Damn Reavers have been scouring Colorado's edges for months. They'll strip us like a swarm of locusts. Good. That's what I pay her for. Nobody needs to know what's going on behind the curtain except the players, right? I don't expect you to work for free, but I'm not promising anything until I see some results. Do well and you'll be amply rewarded. And I might put more work your way down the line. Thank you. And listen, you may have to shoot some workers, but I don't want them put down permanently. Training up new ones takes too long. 
Bazaar, my senior tech here, has some new non-lethal weapons we're working on. Lazar, you have clearance to provision the Rangers with a batch of NLWs. Please prep the supplies. You got it, boss. Talk to me when you're ready to gear up, Rangers. Die. You go with them. Once they have the NLWs, take them down to the factory and help out while they're there. They'll need someone who knows the layout. Of course, Administrator. Rangers, I am at your disposal. Excellent. Then get going. Solve this for me, Rangers, by any means necessary. Rangers, let's get you outfitted for the factory. Hi, Die. I have the non-lethal weapons Markham asked me to give your friends. Thank you, Researcher Blazer. Rangers, this is Laser Blazer, a researcher in our R&D department, and its sales liaison. It's Lazar, actually. Accent on the Czar. But yes, I'm your P.O.P. for R&D. Point of purchase? That's sales lingo. I learned it in a book. No, it's Lazar Blazer. I don't know why people have a problem with that. Pretty clever if I do say so myself. The workers are all fitted with cybernetic controllers that connect them to their exoskeletons and other equipment. So what these weapons do is disrupt those controllers with feedback. Enough disruption and... The workers go nighty-night, uh, but suffer no long-term damage. That is incorrect, Researcher Blazer. Long-term effects include occasional fainting, sleep loss, hair loss, memory loss, nosebleeds, erectile dysfunction, and sterility. Short-term effects include third-degree burns, convulsions, and loss of bladder control. Come on, Die, you're not exactly helping my sales pitch here. Well, they're armed with their tools, and they're deadly. Rivet guns, tar sprayers, ignition sticks, all those things will mess you up. And they're mad enough to use them. That Celine Crow has got all the workers riled up. It's all Security Chief Ludlow can do to keep them penned up down in the factory. Otherwise, they'd be running through here, tearing the place up, and turning all our white collars red. Oh, I suppose she has some legitimate complaints, but she should have taken them through the proper channels, not started calling on the workers to smash the machines and hang the bosses. She's just too volatile for factory work. The computation engine should have never hired her. I didn't say that! Stop putting words in my mouth! I... Look, if we don't have any more business, I've got work to do. Great! Have a look! Oh, uh, just to warn you, I do have to charge a $1 processing fee for each item. Sorry. Our next objective is finding Carl Ludlow, security chief. He will be on the factory level. Proceed to the elevator on the west end of this floor.